Hi and welcome to Philosophy with Phil, with me Phil Cohen. For this video I want to talk about the human psyche and the, 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 the human mind. To get going we're going to take an unusual starting point and that is talking animals. In the Torah there are two talking animals if we go through them chronologically. In the Garden of Eden there is a snake and later on the, the non-Jewish prophet Bilam rides on a, on a donkey that talks to him when he goes off to, to curse the Jewish people. Note that in the snake is a male snake who's communicating with a female, Eve, whereas Bilam's donkey is a female donkey talking to a male. We'll come on to those later and see the significance, hopefully, of those later. But let's compare and contrast the two incidents. The snake uses the power of speech to seduce Eve in an emotive, seductive, expressive kind of way. It doesn't really use logic, but talks a lot. What we call in Yiddish, does a bit of a schmooze. Whereas the donkey asks simple, logical questions, very much in the Socratic tradition. In fact, the name given to the donkey is Aton, which in Hebrew is the same name for the city of Athens in Greece. Very much the centre of didactic and uh, logical discussion, philosophical rationalism, um, and so on. So the snake, if you like, is more divergent, starting outwards, going outwards. Whereas the donkey is more convergent, logical, deductive, rational. How can we apply those two concepts to the human mind? Well, we know that the human brain is consists of two halves, a right side and a left side. The right side is seen as being more expressive, creative. Let's not forget that the, the, there is a chiasma, they, they, they cross over and that affects the left side of the human body. Whereas the left side of the brain is seen as being more logical, more, um, um, deduct more deductive. In, in Hebrew, we say that that initial creative inspiration, that expressive part, the right side of the brain, is called Chochmah, relating to the snake. Whereas on the left side of the brain, we have the idea of Bina, more contemplation, incubation, if you like. And it's no coincidence that we assign them as a pairing, as a, as a polar opposite pairing, male and female characteristics. Chochmah, this expressive initiation, the, the flash of, of, of inspiration, is seen as being a male characteristic. Just like Abraham, the first of the patriarchs, was a male. And expressed that. And just like I said, like the snake was a male in the Garden of Eden. The left side, the bino, is seen as being female, more incubate, more of a, have it taking on more of an incubation role. And that's seen as being female, just like Isaac. Incidentally, the only of the patriarchs to take on just one wife. We see these two come to play um, in the biological process of conception, where um, it is the mother, the female, who incubates the baby during the gest gestation. Where it's the father that gives that initial, initial spark that, that creates the life, that fertilises the egg. So we have these two opposing um, mindsets if you like and of course each and every one of us has those two in different um, different degrees and different influences on their behavior 
But they come together through a process of harmonisation, an application of meaning. And by applying a meaning to them, they can take on a more spiritual significance. That process of harmonisation is what's called das, loosely translated as being knowledge. Not a great translation. We can then decide whether to create that as a memory, a new idea, or to go on to, to, to move it on to action, the process by which we call Haskell, the application. <coughs> it is no coincidence, going back to the idea of conception, that that process is also called Das. The word used to describe Adam's relationship with Eve at conception is called Das. Adam knew Eve and they had a baby. Two, the male and the female, came together and produced offspring. But that meaning can only take effect if it in itself is linked to an emotion. We remember things that we get most emotional about. And so we need to take a step back and, yes, understand those three ideas as being part of the intellect. But they themselves fit into, a, into um, a, another pairing of intellect versus emotion. Those three faculties link with seven other faculties that are described as being the emotional faculties. By linking them, by linking those memories to the emotional, to the seven emotional faculties, we can create memories that are lasting and have more meaning to us. Seven is a number that represents natural, um, the natural cycle, the natural state of existence. Most three-dimensional objects, for example, have six faces, a cube has six faces, and a central point uh, that, that sustains their existence, which is God. Um, seven is seen as the natural cycle, the natural order uh, of, 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 of the world around us. Seven colours of the rainbow, seven notes in an octave before it repeats and starts all over again. Seven is seen as, as a, is a common number in Judaism because it shows how we show dominion over nature and how we bring nature to, to, into our lives. Not surprising then that it features so heavily in the festivals, for example, which are tied in with the agricultural cycle. I should also point out that, that although there are seven, those seven are often bunched up into one, as one collective, if you like, of the emotional faculties. So we have the three intellectual uh, faculties plus the one emotional faculty um, uh, combined. And the three and the one combine to form four. And we see the number four coming up in Judaism a lot in relation to, for example, the four levels of the soul, which, which very much parallel these, these, these three plus one uh, model. Sitting above the three um, levels of the intellect and the, the seven sitting below that is what we've described before as rotsam, free will, like a crown that sits above a king. It's that linking point between the intellectual faculty and the spiritual faculty, God, the source. So just as we have if you like, the mind and the heart as an axis upon which we, we sort of, we, the human mind rests. We also have the body and the soul axis. And the rutsan, the free, the free will, sort of mediates between those two, as we've said before. I hope that helps. Shabbat Shalom. And thanks for watching. And I do hope that you'll join me for other videos in the future.